the running back position is one of the most injury-prone positions in all of football, which makes sense. If you take hits on almost every play, you increase your chances of injury. If you snack on too many ding-dongs, you increase your chances of diabetes. Just common sense. Luckily, most teams have a plan in place, securing a quality backup in the instance their starter goes down. I'm Hassan Khan of Time of Football, and here are 10 backup running backs who are good enough to be starters. Number 10, Kenyon Drake. Drake has had quite the football journey. He was a three down back in high school, but at Alabama and the majority of his NFL career, he split time with other running backs. In fact, he's only had 20 or more carries in just eight games in his career, majority of which came during his time with the Cardinals. Think about that. He's been in the NFL for six years and only eight times he had a heavy three down roll. Though he's been another example of Adam Gase's players that goes on to do bigger and better things, with this now being Drake's third team, it's hard to imagine him being a starting running back in the future unless Josh Jacobs were to get hurt. Number 9. Justin Jackson Props to Austin Eckler, who has dealt with doubters saying his smaller build wouldn't allow him to be a three-down back. Eckler obviously has proved that theory wrong, but Justin Jackson himself has looked impressive when Eckler can't go. In the one game Eckler missed last season, Jackson ran for 64 yards and two touchdowns on just 11 carries. In his four-year career, Jackson is averaging five yards a touch on over 200 carries. He makes the most of his limited opportunities presented to him, and it leaves us wondering how he'd do in a featured role. Number 8. Ramondre Stevenson The Patriots fell in love with Stevenson back in training camp, after reports were surfacing that he was being compared to a Legarrett Blunt that can catch. The problem was that the Patriots loved Damian Harris as well. That's a good problem, of course. But in the times Harris went down with an injury, Stevenson flashed big play potential. New England is known for rolling with multiple backs, but if Stevenson ever got the shot to be a starter, I have a feeling that the Patriots will be just fine. Number 7. Ronald Jones By the time this voiceover was recorded, Leonard Fournette's status with the Bucks is still unknown. Heck, at this rate, Fournette might just be the latest Buccaneer to retire. There's a chance we could see Jones as Tampa Bay starter in 2022. Though Fournette has been great, going with a cheaper option in Jones wouldn't be bad at all. He started a few games in 2019 and ran into the end zone six times. He then took on a bigger role in 2020, rushing for close to 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. But in 2021, he was an afterthought, with the team electing to rely on the hot hand of playoff Lenny. But we'll see what Jones can do in 2022, as he's trending towards being the Bucks' featured back without any restrictions. Number 6. Gus Edwards Edwards shouldn't be on this list to begin with, as he would have been a starter in 2021. Unfortunately, he tore his ACL in practice before the season even started. Many expected Edwards to have a breakout season, as he's been the definition of consistency in his career. He's rushed for 700 yards on about 130 to 140 carries in every season that he's played. That's over 5 yards a carry each year. He's been a part of a timeshare his whole career, but just looking at these stats makes you wonder what damage Edwards could have done if he started an entire season. Number 5. Javante Williams Again, this was recorded prior to free agency, so as of right now, Melvin Gordon is the starting back for the Broncos. But even with Gordon's lead role in 2021, Williams finished with the exact amount of carries as Gordon. What puts Williams into the top five on our list is the eye test. It was almost guaranteed that Williams would get extra yards after contact. In fact, he led the NFL in broken tackles. Think about that for a second. He had more broken tackles than Jonathan Taylor and Najee Harris, who both had over 100 more carries than Williams. If given a true three-down role, Javante Williams undoubtedly will break out in 2022. Number 4. Tony Pollard Pollard was drafted in the fourth round in 2019, but he immediately was entrenched into a role since his rookie debut, solidifying him as Ezekiel Elliott's change of pace back. Since then, he's been impressive. Pollard has been the lead back in just one game in his career, but in that game in 2020, he rushed for almost 6 yards a carry and 2 touchdowns. In 2021, he saw the most amount of opportunities in his 3-year career, oftentimes looking more impressive than Ezekiel Elliott. 2022 will be the final year on Pollard's contract. 
And given that the Cowboys are financially tied to Elliott for a few more years, Pollard may get his opportunity to start with another team in a couple years. Number 3. A.J. Dillon 2021 was a strange season for Packers running backs. Towards the last half of the season, it was almost a guessing game on who would get the majority of the touches, Aaron Jones or A.J. Dillon. The Packers drafted Dillon knowing that Jones more than likely would sign with another team, but when he elected to come back, Green Bay still incorporated Dillon into their game plan. Last year, Dillon rushed for 800 yards and 5 touchdowns, even out-touching Jones on the ground, while Jones was heavily targeted through the air. It remains to be seen if this will continue to be the Packers' plan, utilizing Dillon in the run game and making Jones their primary pass-catching back. Either way, Aaron Jones has three years left on his contract, meaning that unless he regresses heavily, Dillon will continue to be in a timeshare for a long time. Number 2. Alexander Madison The Vikings featured back Dalvin Cook missed 17 games in his first two seasons. So, as an insurance policy, Alexander Madison was drafted in the third round in 2019. This ended up being a great move by Slick Rick, as Madison has been a decent fill-in for Cook, who's never played a full season without missing a few games. Madison has just six career starts and has rushed for 90 yards in five games in his career. Much like Tony Pollard, 2022 is the final year on Madison's contract. Given the injury history of Cook, as well as the contract, it's not out of the question that Madison could resign to be the Vikings' lead rusher. If the team elects to stick with Cook, expect Madison to get a massive contract with another team next offseason. And number one, Kareem Hunt. I know, I know, it's a disappointing way to end the list. Why are we putting him on the list when he's already been a starter in the past? Well, when you've been one of the better backups in the league for the last few years, you deserve to be number one. Though he's been a starter in the past, we put him on the list because he's been a backup for way too long at this point. Hunt has been productive since his rookie season, both as a rusher and a pass catcher. He has a career average of 4.6 yards a carry and has played well when Nick Chubb would be inactive. Had it not been for off-the-field issues, many could argue that Hunt would be one of the best backs in the league at this point. He would have continued to start for the Kansas City Chiefs and played alongside Patrick Mahomes. But the 26-year-old went down a different path in his career, and it remains to be seen if he'll become a three-down back ever again. Who are some other backup running backs that could be starters someday? Leave your comments down below and let us know your thoughts. Subscribe to this channel for more lists just like this one every Tuesday. Also, be sure to hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you guys so much for watching this video.